Hello guys, Oscar Hotel 8, Sierra Tango November here from Survival Tech Nord. I'm out on the island of Hailuotu at KP24 India X-Ray, a day trip made possible by Power Film Solar. I'm testing a theory, and I'm pretty sure I already know the answer, but of course, if I don't get out there and do the testing, it's nothing more than speculation. So the argument is, is it more efficient to use a QRP radio and amplifier as opposed to radios like the Yaesu FT891 or 857? Naturally, we're talking about off-grid or grid-down communications where the conservation of our resources and grid independence are critical. Realistically, though, this doesn't have to be an emergency communications or preparedness scenario. It could just as easily be an off-grid FT-8 expedition. Now, my belief is it's much more efficient from an off-grid perspective to run a QRP radio and a good amplifier as opposed to running a QRO radio. Unfortunately, as it often is on this channel, it's not that straightforward. So let me go ahead and explain the configuration, the gear I'm using, and the results of my testing out on Hailuoto. You are listening to the emergency broadcast systems. This station broadcasts emergency news and official information on the air for a sign area. Now over the years you've seen me operating with quite a few different QRP radios portable on the channel. Some of those are the Zygu X5105 or the Lab 599 Discovery TX500. But we also have a lot of time in the saddle with the Yaesu FT817 and 818. Now most recently I've had my attention on the ICOM IC705. This is the rig we'll be using for the tests on Hailuoto. Providing power for this off-grid test is the Powerfilm Solar FM16-6000 from the Lightweight series. At 4.2 pounds or 1.9 kilos, these 100 watt panels offer the highest power to weight ratio of any panels I've researched for the channel so far. Solar storage for this expedition was a 20 amp hour, 256 watt hour lithium iron phosphate battery made from headway cells. The charge controller was the Buddy Pole Power Mini. Now on the QRP side of things, we're using the ICOM IC705, we're using a DIY599 PA500 amplifier, and of course the Microsoft Surface Go 2. Now I'll be using this setup for JS8 call, FT8, and WinLink exchanges for the entire day. Now on the QRO side of things, my buddy, Oscar Hotel 8 Hotel Uniform Bravo, is using a Yaesu FT891 with an LDG Z11 Pro 2 antenna tuner. Powering his data communications is a Dell Latitude 7280, which incidentally, is also powered via USB-C power delivery. For off-grid power, Hotel Uniform Bravo used my 576 watt hour solar generator. It's a modified version which wasn't actually ready to be field tested, but nevertheless we used it anyway. He also used the second of the two 100 watt FM16-6000 lightweight series panels I had from Powerfilm Solar. Finally, we set up both of our stations inside the bunker, that's the Nortent Gamma 4. We augmented the shelter with a titanium wood stove. That was good for keeping us warm and for making some sausages. Now the ICOM IC705 with the PA500 amplifier had a received current draw of 310 milliamps. The FT891 with the LDG tuner had a received current draw of 1.1 amps. This means the Yaesu FT891 with 1.1 amps received current was more than 3.5 times higher received current than the QRP radio with the amplifier. Oddly, and during the day, the increased current consumption of the Yaesu FT891 had no negative effect on our grid independence or our ability to top up the solar generators. This was a direct result of the beautiful blue skies and sunshine we had throughout the expedition. 
So in practice, the 100 watt power film panels were able to power the radios during receive without touching the batteries. They were also able to charge up the batteries after a long transmit time, practically topping them up instantaneously. This means during the day and having sufficient sunlight, there was no benefit to the QRP radio with the external amplifier over a QRO radio. Did you catch that? There were two things that made that statement true. That is, enough sunlight during the day and having sufficient charging. If our operations went into the night where we had no solar power actively charging up our solar generators, we would quickly begin to see the benefit of the QRP radio with external amplifier over the QRO radio. So let's go ahead and break it down. With the QRP radio and amplifier, we're drawing just over 300 milliamps. This means when we're just receiving, not actively transmitting, we're actually saving a lot more power than the QRO radio. From a logistics perspective, this means we can carry a much smaller pack or smaller capacity pack because we simply don't draw that much amperage on receive. A smaller capacity pack also means less weight to carry. Unfortunately, having an external amplifier with our QRP rigs means more complexity. In contrast, our QRO rig is drawing almost three and a half times or more than three and a half times the amount of our QRP rig plus amplifier at 1.1 amps. During the day, we could say, who actually cares? It's insignificant because we have that 100 watt panel pumping more power in than we were actually using. Unfortunately, as soon as the sun goes down and that solar panel stops generating power for us, we begin to understand the difficulty in fielding a more powerful radio, which has higher current consumption requirements. This is usually no big deal because we simply increase the capacity of the battery pack to accommodate the solar downtime. This also means the additional capacity we need for the QRO radio actually increases the size and weight of our communications loadout. To be fair though, each of these configurations has pros and cons. We just need to find out which one is the best one for our particular style of operations. For the direction of my own portable station, the QRP radio plus an external amplifier when necessary is the obvious way to go. This setup allows me to carry smaller and lighter battery options than I would with the FT891. I can also carry smaller, lighter solar panels with no obvious loss of charging performance. This also means that additional load carrying capacity can be used for things like food or water. Now the reduced current consumption of our QRP radio by itself or with the amplifier also increases our operating time. And it does so without any additional battery or solar resources. Now there is a downside, one single downside. Adding the amp to our QRP rig increases the amount of components in our setup. However, we are given a massive increase in operating time with the additional components. So I've chosen the DIY599.com amplifier for my QRP radios. It's got extremely low current draw on receive. It operates from 80 through 10 meters. It's got a built-in antenna tuner, completely automatic, meaning it'll tune up your antenna based on an SWR threshold. So no user interaction is required. The amplifier also has passive cooling, which means no annoying fan noise in the background when you're operating voice modes. Now during my data mode testing, I've run this amplifier at 45 watts consistently using FT8, JS8 call, Winlink with VADA HF as well as RDOP. For SSB, 60 to 65 watts seems to be the magic number. I haven't tried to run it harder than that. Finally, in regards to quality and engineering, it's designed and built in Germany. That should about sum it up. 
So why am I making the case for the amplifier? Well, we're always trying to find ways of reducing our current consumption when we're off-grid or in the field. Until manufacturers actually start making QRO radios which have an extremely low current consumption, what we're doing here might be the best way to achieve that balance. Now while I was out on Hilo Auto, I did some tests with Winlink Vada HF. Now I alternated between using the amplifier and using just 5 watts. It's pretty easy to see which is which from the chart coming from OH6 India Juliet. Now I also did some tests with JS8 Call and FT8. The most impressive of those were with FT8, six consecutive QSOs to Japan. Now the good news here is my station wasn't like a crocodile or an alligator. I was actually being heard and hearing those same stations from all over the globe. So really, the point I'm trying to make here is until we're out in the field operating off-grid or even from home operating without power, we don't actually see the benefits of having a low current draw station available to us. Perhaps manufacturers will get a kick out of this video and uh, come to the conclusion that there's actually a market for a low current draw QRO radio. Let me know what you think. Are you on the side of a single box QRO radio or do you understand the benefits of a QRP radio with an external amplifier? There's no right or wrong answer. It's just a matter of your perspective. So huge shout out to Powerfilm Solar for making this video possible. Big thanks to Oscar Hotel 8, Hotel Uniform Bravo. My patrons and YouTube members, thank you very much. It would be impossible to do all of this without you. Rock and roll, guys. Thanks for watching.